everybody, it's your favorite Auntie Mo, and we are back for another episode of review of Love After Lockup. This is season two, episode 29. Catch me if you can. <laughs> Lord. Before we get into the review, if you have not done so just yet, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think of this video with a thumbs up or a thumbs down, and then hit that notification bell so you will know whenever I upload new content. Y'all, this episode, I'm upset, we TV. Where's Goldie? Where ain't I seen my Goldie? Where he at? Where he at? Like, for real? We got introduced to a new couple, which, um, Lord have mercy. If she ain't dits as hell, I don't know what the hell is. But hopefully y'all are ready for the review because I'm ready to give it to you. I got my peach Moscato, so let's get right on up into it. All right, y'all. First up, we have Angela and Tony. Now, we know Angela is pissed off, y'all. She fresh up out of David's bridal. She mad as hell. She cried in the car the whole way home because y'all know this fool Tony done called her, told her he done escaped from the damn halfway house. So who does she call to help her go and find this fool? She calls Tommy, her homeboy who proposed to her in last episode that's in love with her. She calls Tommy to help her come and ride with her to Tubalo, wherever the hell that is. That sounds crazy. No, no. Uh, uh I ain't riding no goddamn two below. But she wants him to ride with her to out to two below to go and find Tony. For what? For what? Now, first of all, a mission where you got to go and find his ass, you get your home girl for that. You don't call Tommy for that. You wrong for even putting Tommy in a situation like that. Like she says, he's in love with her, but he's her friend first. So he's going to ride out with her. Tommy don't like Tony. So any chance he can get to be super save a hoe to be able to show Angela, see, I told you, I'm the man for you. He going to be there for her, right? Now, as she's on the phone with Tommy, she gets a call from the federal U.S. Marshal asking her, has she talked to Tony? Lord. Now, first of all, it's one thing that your ass is going escape the damn halfway house. Now, you got the laws calling me looking for your ass. Oh, no. It couldn't be your Auntie Mo. I do too much illegal shit. Uh-uh. You can't be having them folk calling me looking for your ass, and I get caught up in something I ain't had nothing to do. I was over here minding my damn business. Oh, hell to the no. But she's in shock. She tells them that she's getting ready to go look for him, her dog on self. They tell her he has 72 hours to turn his little ass in, or else they're going to add on more charges. Now, of course, she don't want him to go back to jail, but at the same time, girl, you don't even know why he ran off from the halfway house in the first place. And he won't tell her where he is because he doesn't want her to turn his ass in. He says that it ain't going to end well for him if he goes back to the penitentiary. Now, look here. Look here. I don't believe a story about you being out with your homeboys or y'all was playing basketball. You got caught up in a rapture and forgot what time it was. And so instead of you going back to the halfway house, you went and rented a hotel. That don't, uh uh. That whole situation right there sounds shaky as hell. It don't even sound right. But Angela. She finna ride out. She finna go find her man. Cause, uh, she ain't finna let him go back to jail. Mm-mm. Not on her watch. So Tommy finally show up to the doggone house. He telling her, like, okay, so what do you want to do? Where are we going to go? Like, what's happening? She's like, I don't have time to explain nothing right now. Um... We just got to go see if we can find him. I'm so upset at him. He's this close to getting out completely and being completely done. What kind of idiot escapes from a halfway house? Damn, Tommy Pap to pop the back on her ass. Huh? And what kind of idiot go chasing after his ass? You damn right, Tommy. I was right there with you like, girl, what kind of idiot do that make you? You going to chasing after this fool. But, you know, hey. It is what it is. She loves her man. She gon' she love her baby father. She gonna do whatever she got to do for him. You know what I'm saying? So they down the highway, riding out, finna go God knows where, looking for damn Tony. Tommy is asking her like, what is it? Basically, he wanna know is y'all still together or no? 
Like, do I got my one in a million shot yet or no? Put me in, coach. I'm ready. I feel bad for Angela. Because this fool, you knew from jump. When he took steak over some pipe, baby, he wasn't... You were not his priority. And then before he got out the car for you dropped this man off at the halfway house, you ask him when I'm going to see you again. I call you and let you know. And then he called you when he in trouble. Oh, no, nah, baby. Uh-uh. Angela, give it up. Turn it loose. That man don't want you. He playing your ass. Girl, don't even do it. Moving on from them, y'all. So, y'all, we got Lizzie and Daniel. They go on their first little date to the hot springs. Now, listen. I want to go to the hot springs. I've heard so much about it. I used to work with this NP who always talked about the hot springs in Colorado. Girl, if you listen, if you watch this, I'm coming to the hot springs in Colorado. I'm going to be there, girl. I'm going to be there. They go on their first little date there. Lizzie's still a little upset because, like she said, they ain't get to get freaky with it just yet. Because when they got home the day before, he was just overwhelmed with being home for, you know, being, you know, locked up, you know, fresh out of jail from being locked up almost three years. Um, everything was just overwhelming to him and he was tired. So they ain't get to goose that night. But... They're at the hot springs, and so she's um, she's nervous because his family is throwing him a welcome home party. Now, this is going to be the first time he's seen his family in almost three years, and Lizzie is nervous. She's like, your mama already don't like me, and I don't like your damn mama. Ain't no telling what she done told the rest of the family. I'm nervous about being around the rest of them. Now, Daniel is like, look here, if I love you, they going to love you too. They ain't got no choice but to love you because you mine. I'm riding for you, Daniel. I really do appreciate that about you. That was real cute. But it was cute to see them on their little date at the hot spring or whatever. That was cute. Chai, afterwards, they went to Lizzie Mama house. Goose on the laundry room flow. Chai right there in front of the cameras and all of that. It was just nasty. Afterwards, y'all, they sitting on the couch smoking cigarettes. Looking like hot white monkey love. It was just nasty. So they finally get to his aunt's house where they're having the welcome home party. And it's really cute. His grandma gives him a hug. His aunts, uncles, cousins, everybody's there. Everybody's hanging out. And so everybody's just basically like saying how excited they are to see him home. You know, they haven't seen him in a long time. And so how they're all proud of him. Now the aunt, this aunt irritated the hell out of me. In front of all the damn family, the aunt gonna ask, well, I just got one question. Did you steal Bob's hunting bow? A hunting bow and arrow, something like that. And he was embarrassed. He was like, you know what? Yeah, I'm at a point where I can admit it now. I don't want to be a liar. Yes, I did steal it. Well, what did she do with it? Did she pawn it? He's like, yes, I pawned it. You know, I'm sorry. That was in the past. Now, Heffa, why did you have to bring that up? You didn't have to bring that up right now. That embarrassed that boy. I seen it all over his face. He was embarrassed. He trying to be a better person, trying to lead the past in the past. You ain't finna get the damn bow and arrow back. So why you have to ask that damn boy that? Lizzie was a little uncomfortable too. Lizzie went off to the bathroom. When she goes off to the bathroom, the aunt is asking Daniel about Lizzie. Aunt is like, well, already off the bat, just my first impression, uh, imp first impression of her. I really do like her. Here come his damn mama. Mama Daniel like, yeah, she's okay, but she drinks too much. Daniel, once again, was embarrassed. He was like, Mama, you ain't got to bring, like, why are you even going there? Leave it alone. She's like, I'm not judging, but what I'm saying is you got locked up because y'all were over at her house and y'all was drinking and you passed out and she likes to drink now. I don't want to get you caught up and whoop de whoop yada, yada, yada. Mama, shut the hell up. I get it. You trying to protect your son. You want your son to be on the right path and all of that. But at the same time, woman, you doing too much. You ain't doing nothing but just going to push that boy away and going to push him further and further into her arms. That's not the way to go about it. Trust me, I'm a mama. I get it. You want to be there to protect your son. But the way you going about it, baby, is all doggone wrong. All wrong. Just as she's talking crap about Lizzie, Lizzie come walking in looking just as embarrassed. Like, woman, between you and your damn sister, y'all talk too damn much. After that, Lizzie was like, okay, we get ready to go. They left. And I don't blame them because they both felt embarrassed. Like, 
What the hell? I know your shit don't smell like roses your damn self. Y'all, we are introduced to a new couple, Glorietta, 34. She has been dating Alex, 28. He's been locked up for two years for theft by check, theft by theft and burglary, stealing, shop stealing and stealing shit. He been locked up for two years. Now, they met a year ago. Her cousin was locked up. Her cousin ended up introducing her and um, Alex together. From there, she says she went visiting him. This fool, and um, he proposed to her during a visitation. When they threw the window, he got down on one knee, sung her a song, and now they engaged. Lord, Glorietta. The lights are on for Glorietta, but ain't no damn body home. She's very, she's got a lot of space. A lot of space up here. I'm not calling the girl no I'm not. I'm, she's got a lot of space right up in here. Now, she is getting some clothes together that she bought for him. While she's getting his clothes together, he ends up calling. She's on the phone. Oh, baby, I miss you. I love you. He's like, I miss you too, baby. I wrote a song for you. Gloria. Oh, baby. When I touch you, I love you. I mean, just boy. She loves Alex. Cannot wait to get married to him. She done made a whole wedding scrapbook already. Got the decor picked out, the 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 decorations, the bridesmaids, the rings, the flowers, the everything. Done already made a whole damn scrapbook. Now, nah, this bitch ain't crazy. She meets up with her mom because she says that she's been hiding some details about the relationship from her mother. Now, she meets up with her mom. They go to this dog rumor to drop the dog off. Big ass, sea biscuit ass damn dog. Drop the dog off to get clean, pampered. I don't know. Whatever the hell it is they do with dogs at the dog rumor. She's sitting down and she's talking to her mama, right? She's telling her mama, so you know this guy, Alex, that I've been dating, right? Her mama's like, yeah, but I don't really know too much about him. Why? I like mama. <laughs> Mama's me. I like mama. She was like, well, we're, we're actually engaged. Mama's like, how the hell are you going to be engaged to somebody who locked up? But he's getting ready to be released, mom. Again, a lot of space and opportunity up here. Mama's like, you don't know nothing about this boy. Like, what? why in the world do you want to marry him? What is it? She's like, because he's got tattoos. He's got nice hair. He's really cool. And I like him a lot. Like, girl, she's, oh, Lord. We can already see where it's going with Miss Glorietta. Okay? She done already set the foundation of stupid. And we ain't got, she ain't got nowhere to go but up from here. We can already see the foundation of dumbness that she done already laid out. And I feel bad for her. Because her mama was just like, girl. Where did, did I go wrong with this child, Lord? She's like, Mom, he's really nice. He sings songs to me. I'm like, what is he saying, Jailhouse Rock? I don't blame her. Like, girl, you don't realize how really not smart you sound right now. Mom, like, I don't know this dude. I don't want her to end up a skin suit some damn where. I don't know him. And she just talking about she's just going to marry this fool. She crazy as hell. She like, well, mommy, you have to understand he came from a good family. Ted Bundy came from a good damn family. What the hell that got to do with me? What the hell that got to do with him? She wants mama to just, look here, mama, just give him a chance. We gonna see what's gonna happen. Mama agrees to give him a chance, but she like, look here, I'm gonna keep my good eye on this mofo because I don't know him. And I know some, I know some dumb shit when I see some dumb shit and you don't see it. But baby, girl, we can, again, we can already see where it's going with this one here. She ain't all the way here with it. She not. So y'all, Vincent and Amber. So y'all already, we already knew something wasn't right with Vincent and Amber, right? So Amber, it's the next morning after she done spent the night over at her mother-in-law's house. <laughs> puppies mama so mama just got right she had to get right down to the meat and potatoes okay so what's going on with you and vincent because you don't seem like you're really into him he don't seem like he really into you i don't see y'all being affectionate like what's going on with the both of y'all now amber tells her mother-in-law <laughs> that 
She's had a lot of different pen pals, but everything just seems really different for him. That's why she wanted to give him a chance. But she just see, seemed that some things seemed really awkward with him, like him wanting to marry her all you know, like right away. Now, she tells her that he came up with the idea of adopting her as a way to get more money. That way, that money can help out her and Puppy. Now, she says later on, he sent her a message and was like, yeah, I've already reached out to Puppy. I'm going to adopt Puppy. So, she said that the adoption ended up going through some kind of way, but the idea of it was that he was going to get more money. That way, that money he could give to them. Now, y'all, that seemed like some IRS fraudulent type stuff right there. Vincent, you can mess up your benefits this way, homeboy. I don't know if it was a good idea you came on the show to do this right here. Because you know the IRS is watching. They watching. So when Vincent finally shows up at the house, um, Puppy's mom is like, look here, I need to talk to you. Uh, how the hell are you just going to adopt my child? She's 32. What, what the hell is going on? He tells her that he was under the understanding that he could get more money added to his check, you know, since he's in the military, and that money he would split between Amber and Puppy. Now, from his mouth, he said that all three of them came up with the idea to do it. Amber, as she's telling puppy's mom she's making it seem like it was all on vincent now we know that amber is a hustler so i don't believe for one minute that it was all off on her either i mean all off on vincent because how would he even know to think to do something like that but then again you never know it's it's weird as hell now after he broke it down and he explained to her that um you know i did this because i wanted to be able to help amber out and i wanted to be able to help puppy out you know he you know it seems like puppy's mom kind of understood it from there because he said the adoption went through but because puppy is in prison he can't get no money from her so are you getting money from for amber did you adopt her too like i we didn't get no real clarification on that but it was really damn weird but puppy's mom is like look here um i really want to know what's going on with you and amber as well because i'm talking to her too y'all don't seem affectionate y'all just don't seem like y'all together like what's going on he says that he feels like he needs to give her her space he doesn't want to come on too strong Whoop de whoop, yada yada yada. Long story short, he's like, I really want to go see her. He goes in there and tells her that he apologizes if he seems like he's been standoffish, that he really does love her, he cares about her. It seemed creepy. The way he was like all over her shoulder telling her that she was just like, uh, okay, alright, alright, love you too. Okay. It was just really weird. Amber. I'm ready for Puppy to get out of, out of penitentiary because Puppy going to crack the code on all this little fraudulent shit right here that's going on. Because Amber, you not feeling it for Vincent. Vincent was scamming trying to get some more money. Y'all both going to be taken down by the damn IRS. So, uh, next, we just need Puppy to get out of prison. She the only last missing piece of the puzzle. <laughs> Y'all, so we have Lacey and Shane. They're at the beach. It's their last day together. He's gotten paroled to his dad's house, so he's got to leave. She's got to go back to be with her kids, right? Because you know she lied to her dad and told her dad she out miling some damn where. So they're down at the beach. They're talking. She asks him, you know, what was his charges? He tells her, because you know this fool got, what was that, malicious wounding? I thought the motherfucker was a paper cut killer or something like that. He says that a friend of his or somebody that he knew was showing him pictures. I'm guessing of, he said they bleeped it out. So I don't know if it was little girls, little kids, or whatever. Showed him pictures of some nude kids. He felt some type of way about that. So he ended up beating their ass and the dude ended up losing his eye. So that was the malicious wounded. He says he don't regret it. He don't feel bad for it. He'll do the hell, he'll do the shit again. Because he felt like he needed to take justice into his own hands. Now after that, you know, I ain't mad at you. You do what you have to do. But uh, paper cutting the motherfucker sounding a whole lot more smoother to me. But hey, it is what it is. They're on the beach. They're talking. Now, he asked her, is there anything that you need to tell me? She, This is what she tells him, y'all. This heifer gonna say about a year ago, she met a guy. He proposed to her. Shortly after he proposed to her, he got locked up. He's getting out in a few weeks. 
she's fallen in love with him, meaning Shane, but she also has to see where things go with John, the guy she claims she just met. Now, she smooth lied to his ass. This heifer is a professional, habitual liar. Baby, it just rolls off her tongue like it ain't nothing. She come up with this shit off the dome. I ain't mad at you, Lacey. Do you, boo-boo? Now, of course, Shane is speechless. He's like, dang, like... How am I supposed to take that? I don't know how to feel about that. She's like, but I don't want you to like, you know, not like, you know, start fall, stop falling for me because I'm falling for you. But I just have to see where things go with John. Yada, yada, yada. Now, Shane says he don't trust her. Like, how, how do you think I should feel after this? You just going to tell me that you fallen in love for me yet still tell me that you met another guy that you engaged to, which again, they have a lie. Girl, Lacey, when John get out, he going to maliciously wound your ass, girl. You, you, you playing with fire, girl. You playing with fire. So she tell him she got to see where things go. And you know what I'm saying, y'all? The episode ends from there. I don't know what this girl, Lacey, Lacey, you going to end up dead. Girl, you going to wake up dead playing around with these convicts like that. I'm just saying, y'all, if I missed anything from this episode, please drop it down in the comments down below and let me know. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And Auntie Mo will see y'all in the next video. Peace out. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think and um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. Ah, hello.